Good afternoon, good afternoon, Black and Mary with kids. I am so excited with all this big hair to be with you guys today on this amazing, amazing Monday for another Takeover Monday here on Black and Mary with Kids. I want to thank Lamar and Ronnie for having me on here tonight to come to you guys for another amazing topic as we close out the month of April. Every live that I have been on here, I want you guys to come on in. I'm chatting with you guys, getting you all caught up. If you're seeing me right now, I want you to come below your city and state. Tell me where you're from. Um, but as I am talking to you guys, this is the last live that we're doing for the month of April. And you guys know if this is your, not your first time with me, I've been talking about prayer for a while. Thank you, Prisca. I'm so... You know, I'm glad that I look amazing. This is new. Yes, if you guys have seen me before on here, you know that I never wear my natural hair. So this is new for me to come on here and be here with you guys natural. Hi, Shane, how are you? Um, so come on in, come on in, you all. Tell me your city and state and where you're from because I really want to add, answer this question, all right? So many people ask themselves, should I stay and pray or just walk away? Especially if you're dealing with a really difficult time right now in your relationship or some situation situations and not even in your relationship it may be your job it may be you know your career it may be some choices you need to make should you stay and pray or should you walk away all right this is a question that a lot of lot of women and men ask themselves how long do i need to endure this or should i just get up and walk out that door all right and go to something different and I really want to just dive into this tonight to give you guys an understanding hi Gustavia hi JT from Cincinnati Ohio hi Robin from Connecticut so we're gonna dive right into this but if this is your first time joining me I want you to comment below this is your first time because I want to know who I'm talking to today as well while we're on here and if you guys do not know, we engage in conversation, please share this on your page right now because there's someone who's going to need this message for tonight um, that's going to be able to bless them. So please make sure you share this, okay? Hi, LaTondra from Charleston, South Carolina. I'm so glad that you guys are here with me. Um, if this is your first time, okay? My name is Arielle. Let me introduce myself. I am the co-owner of Dunamis Woman Enterprise with my mother. You all will see her tomorrow night at Dunamis. Dunamis is a Greek term. It literally means power. And we are a movement, literally, where we guide women of faith on how to heal within their soul, transform their life and relationships, and ignite their power through prayer. That is what we do at Doing Swimming Enterprise. So what I'm talking to you all about tonight, trust me, I have met so many women who are going through the same thing. We not only just focus on women, but we still uplift and we honor and respect our men, our real awesome men. So if you're a man watching this tonight, know that we love you and that we are also supporting you as well through prayer, through our movement. Movement, all right and so it's so important that I'm glad you guys are here with me for the first time I see some first-timers so if this is your first time just to lay down the rules we get it in, in in the comments okay so comment ask questions engage as I'm talking to you all and giving you all some enlightenment of should I stay and pray or should I walk away all right there's so many things that you know really have I've been through in my life situation I'm not married I don't have any kids for if you guys first time ask me this but I've been in situations, right, where it's like, it's getting a little bit difficult and I don't really know if I need to just stay and pray this through or if I need to walk away and just throw in the towel and say I'm done. And here's what I want you to really think about before you make your choice. Tonight, I'm not gonna tell you what your choice is gonna be because that's not my role. Your, it's your decision to make for what it is, that the life that you're dealing with and the situation that you're dealing with. But what I am gonna do is I wanna give you some critical thinking of what you need to be focused on, all right? So should you stay and pray, right? If you are going to stay and pray, if you are going to endure whatever the situation is that you're facing right now, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your job, whether it's your children, whatever the case may be, one thing that I will say to you is that if you are going to stay and pray, if you have already been praying, if some of you all have been facing difficult situations and you have already been praying, I want you to comment below, pray. All right? If you've been praying, I want to know who's been already praying. Because if you're going to stay and pray, let me tell you something. First thing is that you have to do something different. There's nothing wrong with the prayers that you've been praying, but now it's time to pray differently. You need to increase your prayer life. You need to shift your prayer life. There needs to be a, a trajectory in how you're praying because if you're going to stay and pray and you want things to start shifting, then what I'm telling you right now is something different is gonna to have to take place in your prayer life. 
That doesn't mean that what you've already been doing right now is not good. But if you're still feeling this pool of if you want to walk away, that's saying that in your prayer life, there's something that needs to be shifted and done differently so that you can start producing through your prayers. You've been praying, but now a major shift is going to have to take place so that you can start seeing the production and the prosperity in your prayers as you're staying and praying. But the first thing that I admonish you is that you made a decision to stay. So now that you made a decision to stay, now there needs to be a shift in your prayer life. All right? So if you're going to stay and pray, you got to say, I need to do something different. There's something that needs to happen differently in your prayer life and what you are currently doing. I'm doing this because my light is getting better when my hand is up. All right? So I'm going to keep my hand up. So you got to do something different. But if you're going to walk away, this is what I'm going to tell you. If you're going to walk away, you're going to encounter a different person, but the same thing. You may encounter a different person, but the same issues. If you have not learned lessons from the current circumstance that you are in right now at this standpoint, then what's going to happen is that you are going to encounter different people, different situations, but the same issues. So if you don't take the moment to learn what it is that you need to learn right now, whatever season that you're in, if you don't get the message, if you don't get the lesson learned, if you don't get the takeaway and you just try to lead to escape and you don't know what it is that God was trying to reveal to you in this season, I guarantee you that you're going to encounter different people with the same issue. Because you just learned, you just walked away thinking that was going to solve your problems instead of learning and growing and getting revelation as to why it is that you're here in this season. Because oftentimes that I have been in, 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 in situations that I had to make choices, you all, it was for me, not for the person. We got to take our attention and focus off of the other person. And we got to start looking at every season and situation that we're in right now and put the focus on us. What is trying to be revealed to you? What is it causing you to grow up? Are you need to de- do you need to develop in certain areas? Forget about the person. If you learn to walk away and say, you know what, I'm tired, I'm done, forget it, it's not getting better, this person ain't listening to me, I'm just keep saying the same thing over and over again, they not changing, so I'm just going to move on, maybe you got to change. Not that I'm saying they're right, but it's put the ownership on us, you all. What is it that we need to be doing differently? So if you're going to stay and pray, then that means that your prayers need to start shifting to be into a different level. And if you're going to walk away, know, look at, examine your heart and how you're walking away. Because if you're walking away out of frustration, if you're walking out of way because things are not going the way that you thought that it would go, if you're walking away because you just think that you need something better and these people are less than you, then I'm telling you, you're going to encounter Different people, but the same issues and the same problems because you did not sit down and deal with yourself, okay? So I want you guys to comment below different. Either your prayers are going to be different or if you walk away, you're going to have to do something different, all right? You're going to encounter different people, but you're going to have the same issues, okay? So that's the first thing, all right? Now, second thing, should you stay or walk away? Um... Yes, April, you said second time. Yes, what can I learn from this? Yes, for the shifting. Amen. Wanna different. Yes, I like that you guys are comment below. And if you're just now chiming in here, my name is Ariel Fuller. I am the co-owner of Doing Women Enterprise, where we guide women of faith on how to heal within their soul and transform their life relationships and ignite their power through prayer. And that's why I'm teaching you guys about praying today. Because there's a lot of women that come to us, you all, and they stay and they see something, they see a shift within their life. And I'm gonna give you all the, the reasons why they see a shift. But the first thing is that when they connected with us, they their prayers had to shift and they had to do something different within their prayer life. Nothing wrong with what we've been doing, you all, but if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, we're going to get the same results. So if you want to start seeing new results within your life, you're going to have to start doing something differently that's out of your comfort zone, that's out of your norm, that's out of your realm, and you need to be challenged in certain areas, even in your prayer life. Okay, because all of this is coming to grow you up and to mature you. So I thank Lamar and Ronnie for having me on here. So I'm going to go to number two. All right. So Maria, you said when I tried to talk to my husband for the last time, he said, we're ne- we've never had a marriage. What do you do then? That's a really good question, Maria. We've never had a marriage. Let me write that down because I'm going to go back to that once we're once we done. We never had a marriage. As you guys know, I do, we, we answer questions in our chat box. So if you have questions, feel free to comment below and I would definitely get to that. Um, so Maria, I'm going to get back to your question for this one, all right? The second thing is that when you stay and pray, 
If you haven't shared this, share this, by the way. If you stay and pray, one thing that you, that's going to happen is that when you're praying and you choose to stay, what needs to happen is that you need to get persistent in your prayer life. Oftentimes when I stayed in situations, I wasn't persistent in my prayers, you all. I wasn't persistent and I lacked patience. And so if you're going to stay and pray, then you got to get the motivation and the endurance to be persistent in your prayer life, persistent for what you're believing God for, persistent for the transformation. Even you, Maria, who just said that your husband said that he never saw a marriage. Well, you know what? You got to be persistent in your prayer life that a marriage comes forth because maybe he just sees a, 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 a shacking up of two individuals but you got to stay persistent in your prayer that marriage will be revealed to him that true marriage will get a, that he will get an understanding of what marriage is so we got to get persistent and patient within our prayer life what happens is we stop praying you all and we get frustrated and we want to walk away because we stop being persistent and we lacked our patience and if you're going to stay and pray, you got to get a fire in your belly. You got to get a belief that's something stronger than you can even imagine. And you got to go after that like it's like your life depends on it. Because if you're going to stay and pray, you're not staying just to lay around. You're staying because you need to fight for something. And when you're fighting for something, you're going to be persistent over and over and over and over again until you see the manifestation of what you're believing for. Jamela, you said, what do you do with a husband that purposely tries to find things to put you down about anything you do or don't do? All right. That is a very, very um, harsh sense of criticism. That you are dealing with and we're gonna I'm gonna go to that all right all right I wrote that down so I'm gonna come back to you Jamela and Marie all right the second thing though is that if you walk away all right so I said if you stay and pray you got to be persistent you got to have patience if you walk away though you really got to consider did you know how to stand rightfully in the position that you were in see I'm not married but I know that it, people are people, right? So if you walk away and you enter into another marriage, have you learned what your rightful position was as a wife in the first place before you even walk away? See, take your focus off of the person. Let's go away from marriage. If I'm in a job and people are frustrating me and I have a role in that season of my life, did I stand rightfully in my position and what I needed to be? Or am I just trying to walk away to run away from the problems? You got to know what is your position. And if you walk away and you don't know where your rightful position is and you haven't grown up to develop in your position, then you're going to end up into another circumstance and, and you're going to be in a position that you didn't necessarily need to be in. So right now in this season of my life, I can either stay and be single and be persistent and believe in God for the man that he has for me. Or I could walk away and say, you know what, God, forget whatever your plans is. Forget the man that you have for me. Forget the husband because I'm lacking patience and let me go date and be with all these other random men that are not good for me. But if I do that, I would not have understood what is my position as a single woman. In order for me to stand in my proper position as a wife, I first have to know what my position is as a single woman. Because I have a rightful position in this season right now. And so it's so important that if you walk away, you just start doing whatever you want to do. You're going to abort your growth and your development in the position that you're already in. I hope this makes sense to you guys. If it makes sense, say it makes sense. So when I say that I'm going to stay being single, when I say that I'm going to stay and I'm going to pray and believe God for the husband that he has for me, I'm being persistent to believe something that I don't even see right now. I'm not dating someone, right? I don't have any man in front of me, but I'm believing God for something that is imaginable. I'm believing God for the miraculous and I'm staying persistent and I'm praying for that. But if I walk away, I'm going to get out of my position. Okay. I'm going to read these questions so I can write them down. Gloria, you said, what do you do if your husband had an affair and, and that produced a child? I have forgiven, but he hasn't forgiven himself. Um, so I'm going to definitely write that down about he hasn't forgiven himself. You forgive him, but he hasn't forgiven himself. Okay. Got that. So I got three questions I'm going to get to. All right. After this, I'm glad that it makes sense for you guys. I'm glad that it's making sense. All right. So the third point before I get to Q and a is that if you are going to stay and pray, and this may go to you in this last question. All right. If you are going to stay and pray, you also need to pray for and go through a process of your healing. See, you are put in the position that you're put in right now because either your partner needs healing or you need more healing. But at the end of the day, healing needs to take place. 
And so when you stay and pray, I don't want you to just pray, but I want you to start going through the development process so that you can bring healing within your soul. All right, not healing within your spirit, healing within your soul. Your soul is the damaged places of your mind and your emotions, the thoughts that's coming on through your head, the things that people have said, the criticism that people have talked about when, when your husband had Nick picked on certain things. What that's doing is that's damaging your soul and it's calling you, causing you to have some damages and you need to get healing in those areas. So if you're going to stay and pray, what means is that you're going to have to find your own autonomy outside of your relationship that you as a woman or a man, whoever's watching this, is going to have to go through a process of healing because when you're praying, you can't take that pain and reflect that through your prayers. So you got to go through healing at the same time as you're staying and praying because healing is what's going to transform your husband. Healing is what's going to transform your marriage. Healing within you is what's going to transform you as a woman. See, prayer is just going to bring the prosperity and the production of what you believe in God for, but healing is the transformation. I hope y'all got that. Prayer is just going to produce the prosperity of what you believe in God for, but healing is what's going to transform the situation. Prayer is going to produce and prosper. Healing is going to transform. When you heal as a woman, you are going to transform. Life is going to transform. That's why some people say that prayer doesn't work. Like Robert, you're saying prayer has never worked. Prayer sometimes, prayer and healing is synonymous. So oftentimes we want prayer to work, but we don't want to do healing. Healing is the real work. So if you're saying, well, God, you haven't answered my prayer or your prayers isn't, my prayers aren't working because you haven't healed as well. See, anyone unhealed can say a prayer, but healing is what shifts, right? So Robert, if you say my wife's prayers are not working because your, he your wife may have to go through a healing process. Healing is what transforms you all. We could pray all day, every day, but if our mind and our emotions are still damaged, if healing has not taken place in our life, then the prayers are not going to truly manifest the way that you need to manifest. God cannot answer our prayers sometimes, you all, if we're still damaged in certain areas. Because if he did, then we will damage the things that he has given to us. And we just want prayer to fix things, but truly healing is what transforms those things. You got to understand that they're synonymous. So if you're going to stay and pray, you got to go through a healing process as well. Let pain enter you to a place of prayer, but allow pain to also enter you into healing. Okay? That's so important, you all. Healing has to take place. If you walk away, all right? This is another thing. If you walk away, all you're doing is masking the hurt and you haven't dealt with the hurt. Walking away is just putting a bandage on the hurt and you're saying, you know what, I don't need healing, but I'm going to walk away and I'm going to ask somebody else to help heal me. When you walk away, you're depending on somebody else to heal you. Healing is, is your job. Healing is not anybody else's job. Yes, a man could bring healing to a woman, but healing is your job. Whatever has caused you hurt, even if that man has caused you hurt, even if your relationship or your marriage has called you hurt, healing is your responsibility, nobody else's. I can't blame everyone else for the pain that they caused me because it's my responsibility to pursue healing, not theirs. Pain was permitted in my life so that I could run to a place of healing, you all. So if you walk away, then you're refusing to go through the process of the healing that needs to take place. What is my definition of healing? Healing is sitting down and being truthful, honest, not concealing what is going on within your soul. Your soul is your mind and your emotions. When we conceal, we like to say, well, I'm good. I'm fine. It'll get better. Healing first is sitting down with yourself and letting all flaws out and being truthful and honest because at the end of the day, God sees what goes on in our mind and our emotions as we're going through it. So when you sit down and heal, it's saying I'm dealing with myself and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be honest and transparent with myself and now I'm going to start getting the tools to help develop me in the deep areas that I don't want anyone else to see, but I'm going to, I'm going to be open and honest with myself because I'm going to be naked and unashamed. 
Yes, my husband has probably said some things that have made me feel bad about myself. Yes, men have said things to me that made me feel less than who I was. Yes, people have rejected me and make me question who I am, but it's my job to go and, and run to a place of healing that I build up my confidence. It's my job that I get the tools that I need to dig deeper and say, Ariel, what is it that they said that caused you to get into that state of depression? And now I have to go get the healing and get myself out of those things. Because the enemy is only using those people to get you into a place where you can't pray. To get you to a place where you can't be persistent. All he is doing is using people that are near and dear to us to get you out of position you are. And when you walk away, you're saying, forget the position. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. But you got to fight. That's that persistence and that, and that patience, right? To stay in position. So every time that man says something to you that's off the wall, every time that man says something to you that's going to hurt you in certain areas, it's only to try to, it's the enemy's way of only trying to get you off of your square and get you out of position. All right. If you're hurt by people in the church and you have forgiven them, but now when you go, you can't get into service, um, then it's okay to shift. Remember I said that you got to do something different. So sometimes where you've been fed for a while, maybe you need to start seeking for something different. I'm not saying that you got to abandon your church, you all, but there's different things and seasons that we need. And so sometimes it's okay to go start to, to, to set yourself apart so that you can get what you need, that you can develop, that you can grow. All right. So yes, no outside force should affect us like that, but it does if we don't learn how to govern our own soul. All right. So this is so important. And what I want you all to do for who's staying with me all the way to the end, okay? Because I can't get into all of this today. Um, what I want you all to do, if you want to grow and learn more about how to pray and produce and prosper and really learn how to get the tools that you need to be able to shift your prayer life, whether you want to stay and pray or you already like, look, I'm ready to throw in the towel. What I want you to do is I want you to get growth and I want you to get development. I want you to get tools. And so tomorrow night, I want to just give it to you, give this to you all before I go to Q&A. My mother and I are doing a free webinar called How to Pray, Produce, and Prosper, all right? And I want you all to come on this free webinar to get the tools as we dig deep to teach you all how to stay in your proper position and pray, produce, and prosper. Even if you say, I'm about to abort and walk away, come to this webinar, you all, before you make your choice. If you say, I'm going to stay and pray, come to this webinar to start doing something different. And I want you to go to this link. I want you to go to bit.ly. Someone type this down below. bit.ly backslash free prayer webinar. Okay. That's bit.ly backslash free prayer webinar. Okay. Because it's so important for you to go there and to, to come to us as we're going to take this hour to really teach you and dive in to what it is that you need to, what it is that you need to grow and develop in this situation that you're dealing with. All right. Especially you all that have asked me these questions, Robert, I see you typing, but you're giving me a lot. So where does obedience to God's word come in? Um, obedience to God's word. And this is what we're also going to teach you all as well, right? Um, you have to also learn how to pray God's word. Because if you're not praying God's word, oftentimes what's happening, yes, Kia, that's right, but I need you to put a slash right after that Y. So it's B-I-T dot L-Y backslash free prayer webinar. Yes, Nikki, you got it right. What Nikki just commented is the link that you all need to go to go to, to sign up for the free prayer webinar. Everyone is welcome to do that. The webinar is tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m., okay? But when you are praying the word of God, you all, it's different from praying just because you're believing God, right? But you have to actually believe God. So oftentimes we pray the word of God, but our heart is not in the proper position of where it needs to be. And what it seems like, Robert, and I, I don't know if this is exactly the situation, that most times people in this generation are praying because they're looking for a quick fix. They're looking for something to change right away. And that's why that persistence and that patience has to be in place, you all, because nothing about prayer is a quick fix. This society has caused us to want a quick fix and we want something to just happen really fast. But at the end of the day, we have to go through a process, you all. God is also trying to take us through a process. And we're, we're aborting that process because we want things to just change. We want people to just change. We want circumstances to just change. But at the end of the day, we also have to go through a process. Can you be obedient in the process? All right? It's so important because you got to learn how to be able to do that. Um, so let me go to this question that Maria said. You talked about saying that he said that you guys never had a marriage. 
Maria, I know that hurts about someone saying that you necessarily never had a marriage. And I told you all that I'm not married. So I, you guys can take my advice however you want to take it, all right? But as it relates to people, what I will say, Maria, on the bright side of looking at these things is that would you consider your relationship right now to be the ultimate marriage that you really desire and need as a woman? If your husband does not see what you have right now as marriage, then that means that a true marriage that you believe in God for can still happen. Because there's a lot of times that people stay in situations, even relationships that are damaging, that are unhealthy, and they believe that that is true relationships. And that's not. So when there's one partner who says that this is not it, this is not marriage, then you can look on the bright side and say, well, God, transform us to give us the marriage that we truly desire, that we truly need. Because if two people believe that what your situation is, is what it is, then you're settling for something less than what God truly has for you. So I don't know what his mind was when he said that. I don't know what his place was when he said that. But at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself, is this the ultimate way that you believe that marriage should be? And take his words and send that back unto God and say, God, if my husband doesn't see this as marriage, then show him really what a marriage is. Transform our marriage so that it's a marriage that's serving and good to you. Transform our marriage so that it's giving glory back unto you. Give us the marriage that you truly desire because if he doesn't like what he sees, give us something that's the more imaginable than we can even think of right now. Use what he's saying and shift it to what it is that you believe in God for. All right? Because what he's saying has some level of truth behind his, behind his emotions and his mind and what he's thinking, okay? And yes, communication is the foundation to all. Yes, Maria, so you were transparent and said, no, it's not. So now what I want you to do is I want you to believe God for what is. What is the true ultimate marriage that you see for your life? And as you come to the free prayer webinar, and I hope you signed up for it, we're going to show you how to really get into a posture to pray and produce and prosper. Prosper isn't just money, you all. Prosper is believing God for the relationships that you, that you um, are believing God for. Prospering is that your soul and that your emotions are in a good state and that you don't feel depleted and depressed and weakened in all these different areas. So when you come to this webinar, we're going to shift you to a whole nother level on learning how to pray and produce and prosper, all right? I hope you guys got a lot out of this tonight. This is the last time I'm coming on here, you all, to talk to you guys about prayer. We've been doing this for the whole month of April. If this was your first time, I hope you enjoyed it. But before I leave, first thing I'm going to say is thank you to Lamar and Ronnie for having me on here. I love coming with you guys every Monday. My mother will be here with you guys tomorrow night on Tuesday, and then we're going to come to that webinar, which I hope that you signed up all right it's bit.ly backslash free prayer webinar tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m central standard time 8 p.m eastern standard time thank you all so much thank you deborah for being with me thank you desmonica for being with me for your first time thank you kia for joining in as well if you have not shared this feel free to share it i wish that we had all the time in the world but let me tell you something if you want more all right if you want more of this connect with us go to our private facebook group mighty christian women join that facebook group we have so many good nuggets up in there right here on Facebook so connect with us even the more go to our Dunamis Woman Enterprise page the link is already in the thing and you can like our page and see more of us but join the conversation in our Mighty Christian Women group it's a powerful movement of women that are in there right here on Facebook to give you more all right um, Maria I know you're lost but you're gonna get some guidance all right I want you to sign up for that webinar and I want you to be there to get the guidance because we need to be lost in order to be found. I'm going to say that again. We need to be lost in order to be found. And sometimes we don't like being lost, but we have to get to that place because we need to find a new place in us. We need to find a new place in God. We need to find a new place in our identity. So being lost is good because now you could be found. Now you could find a new Maria and not the old one. 
All right. Thank you, Dima, so much. I'm glad that my hair looks amazing because y'all know this is different. I don't wear my hair natural, right? I love you all. Good night, good night, good night. Amen. See you all later. See you all on the webinar. So please feel free to sign up and I will see you all there. Have a good rest of your night and you all will see my mother tomorrow right here, same time on Tuesday. All right. Love you all and be blessed.